Our next step in our journey through inferential statistics is to conduct the hypothesis test for a single mean. Now we've done hypothesis tests before when we worked with proportions, and the steps we're going to do for a hypothesis test are the same steps as the proportion test. If you remember the hypothesis test for a proportion, we first define the hypothesis. Now we're going to have a claim about a mean, and we'll say that the mu, the population mean, is equal to some value that's claimed, and we're going to try and disprove it with an alternate hypothesis. And based on that alternate hypothesis, we will draw a picture to make sure we're in the right tail. After we have a picture, we'll calculate a test statistic. And then from that test statistic, we'll calculate a p-value. Now, those two formulas for the test statistic and p-value are going to be different than the formulas that we use with proportions, but I'll talk about those here in just a moment. After we have a p-value, we'll compare that p-value to the alpha to make some type of decision. A small p-value will result in rejecting the null hypothesis. A larger p-value will result in failing to reject the null hypothesis, just like before. And then just like before, we will interpret the decision in context of that alternate hypothesis test. So the two things that we really need to focus on that are going to be different with a mean than from the proportion are finding that test statistic and p-value. So let's look at how we can calculate the test statistic and p-value. As we saw with confidence intervals, means generally will use a t distribution instead of a normal distribution. So our test statistic is going to be a t equals, and then we will do x bar minus mu divided by the standard error where that standard error formula is equal to the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of the sample size. So just a few notes on that. x bar is the mean of the sample. s is the standard deviation of the sample. mu is the claimed mean of the population. And that's going to come directly from our null hypothesis. And n is the sample size. And so in this way, we can quickly calculate the test statistic. And then once we have the test statistic, we're going to find the p-value. And we're going to do the p-value on Excel. And one nice thing about doing the p-value on Excel is Excel has a different command based on which tail we're in. So we don't have to worry about the 1 minus or doubling the tail like we did with the two-tail test when we were working with the normal distribution. The normal distribution on Excel exclusively goes to the left. But on Excel with the t distribution, we can choose which tail we're in. If we're in the left tail, we will use equals t.dist as our command. We'll list the t, comma, the degrees of freedom, comma, and true. And this is where it's weird. The left tail test is the only one that you actually need to write the true for. If it's a right tail test, we can tell Excel it's a right tail test by doing t.dist. And then we add a dot rt for right, then the t and the degrees of freedom. And that will give us the right tail that we want. If it's a two tail test, we say equals t dot dist dot 2t for two tails, t comma degrees of freedom. Now, there's one asterisk on that two tail test. And this only applies to the two tail test. The t is positive. 
So if the t was negative, we would change it to a positive for this two-tailed test. So if it was negative 1.3, we would type in positive 1.3 on the two-tailed test. On the left tail and right tail, it's OK to have a negative. But the two-tailed test, Excel is picky. It wants a positive. So let's do an example. We're not going to do a full hypothesis test, but I want to do an example where we actually find the test statistic and the p-value. And then in our next video, we'll actually do a full hypothesis test. So for our example, we're going to find the test statistic and p-value if the sample size is 25, the sample mean is 14.2, and the sample standard deviation is 3.6. And the null hypothesis that we were testing is that mu is equal to 16. And we're actually going to do this twice. First, we're going to look at how we would do it if the alternative hypothesis was that mu was actually less than 16. So let's see how that plays into things. So if we wanted to find the test statistic first, to find the test statistic, we first have to know what the standard error is. The standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. In our case, the standard deviation is 3.6 divided by the sample size. Square root of the sample size is 25. And that's going to give us 0 0.72 for the standard error. Once we know the standard error, we can calculate the test statistic, t, because t is equal to the mean of the sample minus the mean of the population divided by the standard error. In this case, the mean of the sample was 14.2 minus the mean of the population from the null hypothesis is 16, divided by the standard error of 0.72. And when I do that on my calculator, I end up with exactly negative 2.5. That is my test statistic. And then if I want to calculate my p-value, for the p-value, we need to decide if we're doing a left tail, right tail, or two tail test. And that's going to be based on the alternate hypothesis. The alternate hypothesis wanted to prove that we were less than 16, which means we want to be in the left tail. So I'll use the left tail command, which is t.dist, comma, or open a parenthesis. Our t value is negative 2.5, comma. The degrees of freedom are always one less than the sample size. We found that out in our prior video about the t distribution. So that's going to be 24, comma. And only with the left tail, we need to say true. And when I do that, we get 0 0.0098 as our p-value. Now, if I change this problem slightly and say the alternative hypothesis was not less than, but it was not equal to 16, finding the test statistic would still be exactly identical. The standard error would still be 0.72. The test statistic, t, would still be negative 2.5. But now, if I'm doing a two-tailed test, not equals to means I can be smaller or larger. Now, my p-value. For a two-tailed test, I use the two-tail option, which is t.dist.2t for the two tails. Then I put in my t value, but remember the t must be positive. Our t value was negative. So we ignore the negative on a two-tailed test, and we just put in positive 2.5, with the degrees of freedom being 24. And when I do that on Excel, you should get 0.0197 for our p-values. So that's how we can use Excel to help us find the test statistic and the p-values for our hypothesis test. In our next video, we will conduct the full hypothesis test with all of the parts.